Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and today we are going to create this 3D map animation in After Effects without using any third party plugin. You can use it in documentaries or other type of videos. So let's see how to make this. Alright, so right now I'm in After Effects and you can see that I've already imported this image. So this is nothing just the image of an Australian continent and it's completely up to you can have image of any other place. Just make sure that it is transparent like this. So once you're done with this, you can import that in After Effects and after that you are ready to go. So first we will begin by creating a new composition. So let's go to composition, new comp and I'm going to call this one main. Width and height will be 1920 by 1080 frame rate 30 fps duration you can pick 20 seconds or whatever you want and after that you have to change this 3d render setting so let's go inside this tab and over here it is set to classic 3d let's change this to cinema 4d now make sure to do this step otherwise you won't be able to get the 3d effect just click on ok now here we have our composition now first i'm going to drag our image so let's drag it over here and I'm going to enable the transparency to see what we have over here. So first, we are going to trace this image. And in order to do that, we are not going to use the pen tool. Instead, we can just simply go to layer. And over here, we have this option for auto trace. Let's click on that. And it will give you this menu. And from here, we have a bunch of different properties. You can just set all of these settings to like these. And if you want to have like more details into your outlines then you can just set the tolerance to like something like 0.1 now it will have a lot of details like these all of these small elements and these curves will be like taken care of but if you want to have like uh, just an overall like view of the island or the location then you can just set this value to like something like this now once you're done with this just click on ok and you can see that we have traced our surface and we can probably disable the transparency now we can get rid of this image because we don't need it. Now we want to convert this into a shape layer because right now you can see if I press M, you can see that this is in mask and we can convert them into shape very easily. So let me show you how. So first select the pen tool, make sure none of the layer is selected. Then just simply randomly draw a shape, something like that. Now we can select this and let's open it up. Go to content, shape and let's open the path property. And over here you can click and add a keyframe. Now let's select this and let's open it up. You can see that we have a bunch of different masks because we have a lot of small islands like these which we don't want if you want you can like just copy all of these but if you don't want then we are going to just use the main island which is this one so if i click over here let's select this you can see that it will highlight the masks 5 which is this bigger area this one so i can just open it up over here you can see we have this mask path and we have this keyframe so just copy this keyframe and let's go over here make sure that this path is selected and just select this and paste the keyframe now here you can see it will create the shape layer from the mask now i don't want all of the other small islands but i do want like these three over here and we can add them in the same shape as well it's actually quite easy let me show you how to do that so we have this path one let's select this press ctrl d to duplicate this now we have this path two now i'm going to select this and let's select this island the smaller one now let's see which one is this so it, this is the mask 36 now just simply copy this and just go over here make sure that this keyframe is selected and just paste it perfect now in the same way let's select this and let's select this one and it is this mask 40 let me just close this up and i'm going to just copy this keyframe let's go over here again we have to select this press ctrl t let's open it up and i'm going to just paste it by simply pressing ctrl v now we have one last mask left so let's select this one and it's the mask 39 let's open it up let's copy this and let's go back over here select this press ctrl d mask 4 and just simply paste it perfect so now we have like all of these four elements which we want and we can probably get rid of this so now I have deleted it. You can see that we have everything set up. Perfect. Now I'm going to make this 3D. So in order to do that, you can just click on this icon. And first let's add some elements as well. So I'm going to add a background. So right click new solid. Let's just set whatever you want. And on this one, I'm going to apply ramp or gradient ramp. Let's drag it over here. And let's play around with a couple of these settings. So I'm going to like make it really dark, something like that and over here as well this blue sort of thing now we need to have a camera in our scene as well so for that we can right click new let's add a camera and i'm using this 35 mm just click on ok 
Now I'm going to add an null as well to control our camera. So right click, let's add a null object. Make sure that it is 3D. I'm going to parent this to the null so that we can control the camera using null object. Now we can select this object or this shape and let's make it anchor point in the center. So you can select this layer, hold down the control key and double click on this. Perfect. Now let's open it up and we can go inside the geometry option. Over here we have this option called extrusion depth. Now again, if you are if you have not set the rendering option to Cinema 4D, you won't be able to see these options. Just make sure to set it to Cinema 4D. And after that, we can just increase this up like that. Now you won't be able to see anything because we are currently in like different perspective. Here we have some 3D geometry. Now we are not able to see any 3D depth because we don't have any light in our scene and we actually don't need one. We can play around with these settings to like make it like appear. Now before we continue, if you enjoy my work and you want to support me, then you can check out my Patreon page. Over there you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on Patreon. Make sure to check it out. Link for that is in the description. Now let's continue. So under the shape, we have this option called add. So if I go over here, we have four of these options from where I can simply add whatever I want, like different color at the front, back or the bevel as well. So I basically want to add some different color on the sides. So for that, I can just simply select the color option, but it will give me this warning because I have to like group all of these elements. So for that, we can go inside the shape and let's close all of these paths like that. Now I can select this and let's go to add and let's create a group object now make sure that you do this otherwise you won't be able to add any colors to this so let's select this and just drag it inside the group now we can select these fill and stroke to the group as well perfect now i can go to the add and let's go to the side and i can enable the color now here you can see we are able to see the color and you can change the color from here as well now let's play around with the geometry and i'm going to increase the depth little bit so let's set this to something like 60 so i think this looks good now again it's completely up to you you can pick whatever colors you want and i'm going to like give it a dark sort of this thing and for the main color we can go inside the group we have this fill and from here we can just set this to yellow or whatever we want so i think this looks good and i'm happy with these two colors perfect so once you're done with this we are ready to add some grid to this so for that let's right click new let's add a solid as well just click on ok and on this one i'm going to search for grid let's drag it over here and first i'm going to like decrease its border thickness now let's make this layer 3d as well and you will notice that it will create a 3d grid let's place it below our shape and we can probably move it like a little bit at the back so that these are not at the same angle and I'm going to press S to scale this up quite a bit, something like that. Now we can play around with the grid settings. So first I'm going to change this to width slider. So from here we can just play around with how many, how bigger we want the grid to be. So I think this looks good and we can play around with the border as well. So I'm going to just leave it like 0.7. Maybe, yeah, I think this looks good. Let's play around with these colors as well. So I'm going to like make it a little bit brighter blue, something like that. And we can play around with the position like this. Now if you want, you can pick the colors from this as well. Like that, I think this looks much better. Perfect, so here we have everything. Now our next step is to like have our text. So for that, we can select the text tool and you can type whatever you want. Since this is Australia, I'm going to type Australia and let's place it over here. Now I'm going to make this 3D as well, like that. So you can see that it has already aligned itself. Now we can just move it around wherever we want. We can scale it up or down, however we like. Perfect. So I'm going to make this 3D as well. And now I'm going to add some 3D depth to it. So let's go inside the geometry and let's increase the 3D depth like that. And again, we can change the side color by simply going to animate and let's add the side color and let's add RGB. And from here, we can just set this to a little bit darker. So something like this looks good. Perfect. So here we have our text. Now let's just quickly animate this out. So I'm going to select this and let's press, let's open it up and I'm going to reset everything. 
now we can start animating so let's select the null object and i'm going to press r for rotation and let's add keyframe for everything so let's just pick a point so let's create an angle and you can pick whatever angle you want so i think this looks good to me and once you're done with this we can like move to somewhere around let's say seven seconds and after that you can like completely rotate it out like that so i'm happy with this motion and if i preview it out you can see we have this very subtle animation and our camera is like moving across this now in the meanwhile you can also play around with little bit of its position so i'm going to like move it just over here and yeah i think this looks good perfect so once you're done with this we are ready to like animate our text first so let's select the text and on this one we can just simply search for decode and we have this option decoder fade in and now if i drag it over here you can see we have all of our characters like coming in like that now i can select this press u and we can like make this move faster by simply moving this keyframe so there you go now we have our character now there are a couple of things that you can do so first we can select this and i can enable the stroke as well so if you want to have like black outline for that you can just simply select this and just increase it up like this to have a little bit of black stroke like that but again it's completely up to you if you don't want it just leave it to zero so i'm going to set this to zero for now perfect now there is one more thing that you can do we can have some shadow at the back of this but there is one small problem because if you try to apply drop shadow onto this let's search for drop shadow and let's drag it onto this shape you can see that it will have no effect because we are we have changed our rendering engine and we won't be able to use this effect but there is a workaround so let me show you how to do that so once you're done with everything all the animations and everything what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this main composition and let's duplicate this by pressing ctrl d i can rename this to shadows and let's open it up and under this composition i'm going to go to composition setting and we are going to change it and change the rendering engine back to classic so that we can have the drop shadow effect perfect so once you're done with this let's drag the drop shadow onto this and after that you can play around with these values so i'm going to set this to 100 let's place it over here let's increase this up and let's just add a little bit of the softness like that now after that make sure that shadow only option is checked so that it will only render the shadows now we can select this drop shadow and just paste it onto the text as well like that now we don't want to see this grid so for that we can select these two layers and we can probably like hide these out perfect so here we have nothing but just the shadows now we can drag the drop shadow composition over here and we can just place it like below everything like between these two layers perfect so now here you can see we have the drop shadow and we have everything out now if you want to change the drop shadow then you can play around with the settings over here like this so if i press play you can see we have the animation and we have everything set out now again you can use these animation in any kind of video like documentaries or whatever you want and you can see that it's very easy to create so i hope you learned something from this video and the project files for this tutorial is available on patreon so if you are supporting me over there then you can download it from there and if you are not then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one